Hi friends. I have another van chat for you guys tonight. Um, I'm finding that the nighttime is probably the way to go in these uh, hot summer days. We've been having, oh, it's been getting, um, mainly it's been in the 90s, which is a bit much for me. <laughs> um, but um, I just figured I probably am going to do more nighttime videos in the summer. And um, my it was actually kind of, it cooled off a little bit today, and so my kids were all playing outside not too long ago, and so I just, I didn't want to be like, oh, mom's got to do a YouTube video, <laughs> like, so, so they just kind of played, and I kind of tried to prepare a little bit more, and I did on an envelope again, um, you know, kind of a list, and I debated, I have some topics that I'm going to do at some point, and like, more a whole video I think with uh, certain topics but this one's just going to be kind of a little of everything so um, first of all I am Heidi Jo I always forget to introduce myself and so I figured I'd mention that um, and last time you know like some of my van chats have been like part you know part ones part, part two etc um, that's because I don't know I haven't messed with my phone I, I'm recording on my phone and so I haven't messed with it a whole lot. And so it ends up like after maybe 30 minutes, it, it makes it go to a second video without my knowledge. And so I keep talking and I don't realize that it's going to this second video, but I kind of wanted to mention that. So you guys know uh, why, like I have a 30 minute video and like a five or five minute or so video. So, um, I just don't, edit my videos and I just go with whatever. It just, it makes life easier. And then I think in my last video, you could see like some, I don't know if you guys noticed, but my last van chat video, there were lightning bugs. You could kind of see flickering here and there. They just, they've been out and about. They're really interesting. The, um, the lightning bugs that I grew up with look very different than the lightning bugs that are here. And I remember reading, you know, maybe a couple years ago about lightning bugs and how they each like different want types have like a certain blinking like some are slower and some are faster anyhow um it's quite interesting all god's design again um so they can communicate with each other with the the type of lightning bug they are and mate with the the certain kind of lightning bugs and it's just interesting um anyhow um Today, I was talking to one of my kids um, about, well, I talk to my kids all the time, but like about certain subjects, sometimes they get deeper. As your kids get older um, or your grandkids or kids that you know, you know, the, the topics get like interesting, like the questions they ask, you know, they make me think about things I don't normally think about. So um, we're talking about food, of course. I did my biggest Azure haul ever. It's probably the last video. I'll probably upload this one tonight. And it was crazy. Like it's a lot of money <laughs> um, for uh, that. But um, it's just, you know, we talk a lot about food and um, because, you know, you gotta, like there's some meme or some like saying out there, you know, you guys have probably seen it that like, Nobody told me I was going to have to like make every meal for myself. Like, and that was going to be one of my biggest problems in life as I got older. And uh, I mean, you can kind of relate to that, right? Like as you get older, you're like, what are we going to eat for supper or whatever, you know? Anyhow, well, maybe it's just us, <laughs> but um, hopefully I don't have anything on my mouth. <laughs> I, ate, I actually ate before this video this time. So hopefully, um, although like, Eating before this video, I was like, wow, I'm really getting tired. The food's starting to digest, and I'm just like, oh, I'm ready for bed. <laughs> I'm ready for to shut down for the night pretty soon. But um, anyhow, we were talking about how food is, um, how it impacts our bodies. And um, my my teenage daughter was saying how food is the way God heals us. And I thought that was so such an awesome thing to say. Like, I mean, we don't realize what an impact food has on us. Like when I was a kid, um, you know, I would have headaches all the time. Like 
when I was a kid. And some of it probably was maybe dehydration. Some of it could have been lack of sleep because, you know, when you go to school, you got to get up at a certain time and then, um, but it could have been food as well. I remember this one time when, um, I think it was about, you know, 10 maybe. And I just got all these hives over my entire body. And my mom was like, yeah, <laughs> like I'm just itching. And it's like, it was like maybe March or something. It wasn't like full blown some like spring or anything. And so, um, the flowers and stuff weren't blooming or anything yet. And I actually got to stay home from school. And I remember it was kind of fun because <laughs> I got to ride my bike around, you know, but like at the same time I was like itchy, itchy, itchy. But like, I wondered... If I had, like, thinking back, I was wondering if I had a major food allergy, um, you know, or maybe even, you know, chemicals even back then. Although it seems like it's more, you know, as the years have gone, they just keep putting more and more chemicals on the food. Um, also, she said, um, my, my uh, teenage daughter said, diet can change so much for us. And I truly believe that because... Um, one of my special needs kids, um, that's one of the major reasons we are doing what we're doing, um, is because of him and I mean, my two younger boys really. Um, but the one, um, you start having, um, you know, delays. And so his speech was not where it should be. And it's been so challenging. And then um, we started to slowly, slowly change our food because of our other son had a lot of problems with um, wheat. And so um, we figured maybe taking, you know, gluten or wheat out of um, our, our youngest son's diet would change it and his speech would get better like uh, our middle son. And it didn't happen for him. And so that was disheartening, you know? And so anyhow, we, um, slowly started changing our food to more, you know, I researched a lot and slowly started changing our diet to more organic food. Um, it was a bit because of living in farm country, you know, you start seeing all the pesticides that were being sprayed. I mean, on the crops, it's not just one one time during that whole season. It's multiple times that they're spraying chemicals on that food, and so we, um, you know, start going the organic way. And we started more so with our two younger boys, just affordability, you know, and it really started to help our youngest son with speech. And I mean, I was working with him with speech, you know, but. Um, uh, it, his speech as like the time has gone, um, has gotten extremely better. Um, you know, and yeah, some people might say, oh yeah, it's not the organic food, but <laughs> try to convince me of that. I don't, I don't, I, I believe it because it's just gotten so much better. And then like how my kids have reacted to, um, when there's chemicals in food, um, even sh like if you, like I mentioned, I can't remember if it was the last fan chat. I mentioned ice cream and like how my kids are hyper after having like, you know, cane sugar and stuff and, and even honey, you know, will get them hyper sometimes. And so like, I've noticed over time things affect our bodies. And so like there are times that the chemicals, you know, like say we were eating all this organic food for a while and then we'd go and we'd have some foods that were more conventional foods in, <laughs> in America that have the chemicals. And then we have a lot of meltdowns and, and problems with how our kids were acting. And it's like multiple times because we go and we go and eat foods with her friends or, or family that eat the conventional food and we don't always bring our own food that's organic. And, um, so anyhow, that is what I was talking about. Like how even in my childhood, how, you know, you could, how it affects your body. Like just, you can like 
for me, um, you know, feeling a certain way when I eat certain foods. Anyhow, I wasn't going to talk a whole lot about food, but that's a big thing on my channel. That's kind of why I did a, did this channel. It was um, to talk about food and how to change our diets to be um, less chemicals and stuff like that. But I will get back to that at the end of the video. I have a little bit more I was going to talk about um, before I talk about the conclusion of this video. I actually had something. But um, what I was going to say is some more normal <laughs> stuff. <laughs> like that's not really related to my channel. Um, so anyhow, today I wanted to show you guys something really weird. I mean, if you guys come to my channel, you got to expect weird, right? <laughs> That's just me. So, um, so I know I mentioned it. I do not remember what video and I'm probably not going to look it up because I really do not remember. Sometimes I, I mention a video and I'm like, I kind of have like the video. I'm like, I think it was this one, but I really don't. So you guys can let me know if you do remember what video it was, but I did mention how we made our homemade fly swatters. <laughs> and I, I mentioned that maybe I would make like do it yourself sometime and I haven't done it. So I just thought I was thinking about it today because I had to fix our, one of our do it yourself fly swatters. And so I figured I'd just show it because like, why not? Maybe somebody else will help them out and save them a little money. Um, so like fly swatters have been a big part of my life. First of all, I grew up on a farm they were, they were a big part of it. You, you have uh, animals and your barns and you got manure, you got flies. <laughs> and so we always had fly swatters in our home growing up and they made them, you know, like usually it was like a metal handle and then it would be made of plastic even when I was a kid. And as the years go by, they have made them cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. And now, you know, I don't know what you can get out there because we kind of just went away from um, buying them. We came up with our own solution because a lot of times fly swatters, yeah, there might be a buck. They might be $1 at the store, but like if they're a dollar, it's usually like a plastic swatter part and then like a plastic handle probably nowadays. And you know, it's just not going to last. So anyhow, we came up with our own solution. Oh, I don't even know. A few years back. And um, a family member let us have some of their bamboo. And so this is the handle of um, the fly swatter. It works really well. It's very... Um, it's just very strong, this bamboo. You can kind of see there's the bamboo. It got broke off. It, I mean, we even ended up with some that the kids ended up breaking. We had these like really short ones. This one's perfect size, length. And then <laughs> duct tape, yes. <laughs> so you can get like um, a roll of duct tape at like Dollar General. I don't know if there's a better price out there and they could have raised their price, but usually like a a roll of duct tape at Dollar General was like about $3.50. And out of that, you can make like a lot of fly swatters. So like if you can get like bamboo, I'd like to grow some here. I, I've, it can be kind of invasive the further, you know, the more, the, the warmer zone you get into, but I kind of want some just so you can, you know, it's useful. It's useful for building things I've seen. And it's been very useful for us here with the fly swatter. Um, sorry, <laughs> like going on my face. But um, anyhow, uh, it's very strong. But maybe you could make it with like some kind of stick. I was actually thinking because we don't have any bamboo here. Um, I was thinking of trialing maybe some, we had some thin cedar branches and seeing if we could do something with that. I don't know. I haven't tried that yet. So we'll see. But cedar is pretty um, durable. Um, so I thought, well, maybe, but you probably have to sand it down quite a bit, but, um, we just cut like a piece of cardboard, like, you know, like a box you get at the store, you know, every, you know, you can get all three boxes. So at most stores, if you ask them. And so we just put a piece of cardboard in there and then, and then we just duct tape it. So it's kind of strong. We've had some that we've made and then you can just tell like some are better. This is like the winner winner. <laughs> so like, um, but I don't know how long I've had this one and we've used it a lot. 
and it did not look as pretty earlier today because yeah it just leaves like a nasty you know mess on them but um this is a little prettier because it, it started giving way around here so i just strengthened that and i tested it out and it's good to go for a while longer it's not pretty but it is functional and we do have the fly traps that i've shown in the um haul videos and those work really good but even like this week this past week I've noticed like there's just not been much of a breeze and we like to spend time outdoors and if flies are bugging you we've got like either deer or horse flies as well and it's just kind of nice to have a fly swatter outside if you're hanging outside I find so then if there's a really annoying fly I can just get rid of them so anyhow I thought I'd show you guys that that's adventuresome right <laughs> on the homestead and then we did another kind of fun thing today um let me grab it <laughs> I don't know let's see um well like my very beautiful garden I mentioned was looking really poor all the potato plants are dying and I was like I really hope that we got some potatoes and that I didn't mess up which you do you do and no matter what you think like things are never gonna be perfect when you garden ever and so I was like maybe I mean I can't remember when I planted these I probably have to try to look back and see if I wrote it down but um I was like, well, they're dying back, and that's this usually a sign that either um, you killed them by not watering them, or or they rotted out because of too much rain, or they're dying back because they're ready to be harvested. And so today um, we have potatoes. We, we this is our first harvest. I'm gonna finish harvesting it. I'm hoping to actually record a video to finish harvesting that that bed it was in, in a hugel culture bed um and so we got i just grabbed a pot real quick uh i can't remember how big these are but i mean it's almost full um and so that was the excitement of today today they're not like huge potatoes you can see there's some little ones um but um it's very exciting these are beautiful um let me see if I can clean one off here. Is there, this one's pretty cleaned off. Um, they're beautiful, like red. Uh, where's the light? There we go. Kind of a red potato. I love red potatoes. They are so good. Um, so I'm excited about that. I can't remember my daughter. She was mainly digging them up because it's a very tight space where they're at. And I think it was, I can't remember if she said seven or eight plants. So that's, doesn't seem like that much, but I was thinking maybe we would weigh them and see if we got a bigger harvest than what we planted. But um, anyhow, that was exciting. We actually, they didn't rot out. Um, some people we know um, that um, are at the farmer's market, that sell at the farmer's market, had some really not fun stuff where they lost 400 pounds of potatoes that they had planted and um that's what you deal with sometimes like not maybe 400 pounds but like loss you know because they rotted out they planted them and then it just rained and rained and rained and rained and rained and we I think we planted these after they had planted those and so somehow they didn't rot out you know it was a Hugel culture bed which is kind of a bed that's um probably do a video on that at some point there are awesome beds that basically you take old wood um and you put pile it up and then you can also do it in like a raised bed as well or a, yeah raised bed and um but ours are just built up we don't have perfect beds or anything and then you cover it with dirt or we're going to try to do it with manure um, from our animals. Uh, we're, we're hoping to make more beds because um, we live in a very rocky area and it's very hard to do root crops here because of that. And so we're hoping to do more of the helical culture, culture beds. Um, and so, yeah, that's exciting. I thought I'd talk about something kind of weird. <laughs> I'm talking about something weird right but like this is just like a totally off the wall video it's just like whatever I was thinking about I wrote down and 
this is kind of new to me. I don't, I, I don't really remember anything like this anywhere I've lived. I've lived a few places. We have heard sonic booms, like booms that like, you're just like, <laughs> I don't even, it's just like, I almost thought that the windows were going to break. It shook our whole house and our house is pretty like strong. So like, it's just crazy. I'm, I'm really am surprised that it didn't break any windows, but, um, we've, we had one recently and then we've had probably at least two or three other ones while we've lived here. And one of the times, one of my kids was outside with my oldest son and he looked up when it happened and he saw like some, you know, like military type jet or something up there. And, um, it's just crazy. I just, I'm just like, no, I just don't want to hear them. You know, like I'm afraid our windows are going to break and who's going to pay for that, you know? But, um, this wasn't going to be a complaining video. So also I thought I'd talk a little bit about, you know, just bizarro stuff. <laughs> like there's one thing that like we have to put up the sonic booms here, which is not like super often, but we had, we were a ways away from a military base before we moved here. But we had, and I don't know like who owned them, but we had a lot of drones that were just not your typical drones. They were like a plane kind of drone, like military type drone or police. I don't even know, like, I don't want to even think a police department would own such a, they, they would be so expensive because they're the size of a plane. And that we have not experienced here. So I'm very thankful because they would go so low sometimes. And I tried to look up stuff on it because I was just like, this is weird. Like, you know, you know, sometimes it was like in the wee hours of the morning too, you know, like, and I was like, what is going on? Like, I'm a light sleeper. Go outside and this thing is like way low. And one time, yeah, anyhow, I'm not going to get totally into that, but like, like, I just, it was a, a bit much and you just wonder like how they can fly so low. I, I, I did look up, I wanted to say I did look up stuff and overall I didn't find, you know, obviously for the military, you're not going to find a whole lot, but I did find that there are people that because we lived in a very commercial, um, commercial farmland that there will be some that like to do drone like they'd like to take big drones and they like to check out like their fields and things like that but I mean at night you know kind of weird <laughs> um I'm trying to think if there's anything else I was thinking about with these weird topics I don't think so but um I felt like there was one other thing but I can't think of it right now and who wants to talk about this weird stuff that I don't know. I'm just saying, like, what do you guys experience where you're at? I mean, we, dare I say this, <laughs> this isn't another state and not a state, like a state far away. And so, yeah, I guess I'll share this because why not? I'm not going to say the state or anything like that, but we would um, visit our friend and this friend lived by a military base and they would have like their fighter, like they would have their military big, all sorts of planes go over. And often they would even like, if it was even night, you could hear them going over and they had no lights and stuff. It was just really crazy. But we hope and pray that our military protects us and they got to do their covert operations and things like that. Oh, that's what I was going to say. We, you know, like, I don't think we live very close to a military base here that I know of. I haven't really researched it, but, um, again, we've had military, uh, helicopters, you know, big ones go over here as well. Um, I feel like I'm a little kid. I'm like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> like, you know, like people are probably like, this is, you, you're ooing and eyeing over something so, so normal, you know, but uh, I don't know. I just, 
I just find it weird, you know, all the sky stuff. Like, I mean, I imagine, like, what did our ancestors think about, like, when the first planes start flying around and things like that, you know? Um, uh, I'm trying to think what else. Um, oh, I do have another, like, the night sky. Since I'm talking about the sky and all that, um, before we moved, um, we tended to, you know, tend it. We hiked a fair amount at night just because it was cooler. Like, you know, like even where we were in the summer and stuff sometimes. And sometimes we're just busy during the day and it's peaceful and nice at night, you know. So anyhow, um, this one night we're like, see all these, um, oh, I should have drew a picture, you guys. Um, maybe I'll just quick draw a picture for you guys because it's better to just than what I'm going to be able to like to describe to you guys. Um, so we're walking this one night hiking um, and all of a sudden we see all these lights coming from Earth <laughs> and they're just a row of them like just and like I said we didn't live super close to a military base so like, we're like, what is going on? So anyhow, we looked that up and, um, yeah, we believe it. They were the satellites that Elon Musk was sending off into, you know, up there. <laughs> and we've since seen them, like we saw them a couple more times. And then we actually saw some here as well, which was quite interesting because I was looking and looking for them, you know, the satellites, but because you usually can see, I don't know if you guys are into that kind of nightlife and everything, but you can see satellites. Usually it's a single one by itself, but that was new to us, the whole line of of uh, satellites. Um, but have you guys seen them? Like, I, I heard from somebody that some of his satellites have, like, they're no more. Like, so... Um, they're not working or something like that. So I don't know if you can see them. And, but I did see one, I'm trying to think, I might've wrote it down the line I saw of um, here. It was just like straight above us because we have trees like kind of all around us. So that's one thing that, you know, I wasn't sure if we would even be able to see the sat satellites here because it's just not a, as much open space, but we did once and pretty cool in ways um then i'm just going to oh my we're getting close to 30 minutes i hope this doesn't go to a second video but probably will because i'm not very fast at closing out my videos but i also wanted to say that this is my channel real rainbow food and i'm on instagram and facebook under the same name and why did I name my channel Real Rainbow Food? Uh, if you guys are on Instagram, you probably already know the answer to the question. But um, I have always loved... Oh, I wanted to start off before I, I say why. Um, today, one of my younger kids, they're like, Rainbow! There's a rainbow! And I was like, really? Like, we were waiting for rain and we somehow missed it again. Like... I don't know. It's been pretty dry here, so we're watering a lot of our gardens. But it was the best rainbow. And this is only the second rainbow we've seen, but it was a full rainbow. And I was able to get to an area that is more open. And it just, it was so awesome. Um, hopefully, by the time this video goes up, I'll try to post a picture on Instagram tonight. So you should be able to see that over there. Um, but it got me thinking about rainbows again. And rainbows have been kind of a big thing for me since I was a kid. I, you know, I went to a private Christian school and so it kind of stemmed from that a little bit and the story of Noah and the, the ark. And so, um, so why real rainbow food? Well, um, it's real rainbow food made by God, which equals no dyes, no preservatives, no chemicals, no GMOs. You know, it's just, you know, um, just real food from my garden <laughs> or real food, you know, from somebody else's garden, you know, um, that we buy or, you know, you know, anyhow. <laughs> okay. 
So I was going to read um, a little bit from Genesis because that's where the story um, is at. And you can start from the beginning if you guys want in Genesis 6 and it goes through 9. I'm just going to read a little snippet which is in um, chapter 9 verses 13 through 17. Um, let's see here. I have set my rainbow in the clouds and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every kind. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and and all living creatures of every kind on the earth. So God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant I have established between me and all life on the earth. So, yeah, I love that. I love that, you guys. Um, let's see. I was just going to say, let's see. I think that's all I have on my list. I was just making sure I have... Well, I never did tell... Okay, I'll tell one more story. Because I never did tell the story. It was at the top of my list. Um, How my daughter and I got talking about food was... I was talking about the story I read... I don't even know. Maybe a year or two ago. And it was about this... Um, this woman, woman that got Alzheimer's, and I don't remember her age. She was up there in age. And her adult son um, was just distraught. He was so close to his mom, and he he's seeing her not be able to remember anything. And if you guys have seen Alzheimer's, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly for, you know, I'm not very good at pronouncing words, but... Um, if you've seen it in somebody, it's just really, really hard. Um, I, I do know um, a relative had it and I was around them. And um, it's just, it's just, yeah, it's unbelievable in a way. Like, you know, you're just, I don't know. Anyhow, so this son, getting back to the story, the son was really disheartened by um, his mom not being able to share things with her anymore and things like that. And so he just researches, probably somebody like me, like not, he's not researching me, but he's like me and researching stuff to try to see how can I help my loved one. And um, so he just looked into, you know, like he was like, wow, like maybe diet could change how she, she is, you know? And so he had this hope, you know, and he helped her change her diet and, um, kind of to a Mediterranean diet with lots of, 